good shape. Your weekly dose of health information on Deutsche Welle. Find out more about what's new in medical treatment, alternative medicine, as well as nutrition, wellness, and beauty. Medical professionals, therapists, and counselors are in our studio to offer their expert advice on in good shape. Professor Ulrich Keilholz is with me in the studio today. He's acting um, director of the Comprehensive Cancer Center of the Charité University Hospital here in Berlin. Hello, Professor Keilholz. Welcome Hello. to In Good Shape. What does the term personalized cancer therapy actually mean? Well, my favorite definition is a treatment that is tailored to the person of the patient. But the more commonly used definition is that this treatment is tailored to the individual tumor of a patient. So we use tumor characteristics to investigate and define the best treatment that best attacks this personal tumor. So, so the patient does not only have, say, breast cancer, but you specify it more with the genetic profile. And, and how far have we come with that approach? Yes, for certain uh, tumor types, we really dissect into multiple different subsets. For example, for melanoma, the black mm -hmm. skin cancer, we dissect now into two major categories. One is with a driver mutation, one is without a driver mutation, and those with a driver mutation are easy to treat nowadays, whereas the others are more difficult to treat. And, and could you explain a little bit for our viewers the word driver mutation? So tumors have a mutated genome. And the mutated genome can consist of driver mutations that drive a tumor into proliferation that cause the division of tumor cells. If that is present, it's relatively easy to design drugs that specifically block the driver mutations and they have great efficacy. Mm -hmm. So the treatment is more effective and, and is this the only advantage for the patient? It is much more effective and has also much fewer side effects because it's directly specifically at the specific mutation that drives the tumor. We can do that for tumors where we have more common driver mutations, but most tumors still are less defined and have dysfunction mutations that we cannot directly attack. Okay, and which forms of cancer can you treat with that? Best example is melanoma. Mm -hmm. Um, but we're now we have learned to treat also certain subsets of lung cancer, the non-smokers lung cancer, which also have driver mutations we can attack, whereas for others it's more difficult. And another form of modern therapy is immunotherapy. So there are no driver mutations needed for that. So, so what is immunotherapy? So for decades we have started to stimulate the immune system in order to get the immune system to control a cancer, and that has worked in very few patients. Mm -hmm. It has worked one sometimes very well, but in very few patients. And the problem is that immune stimulation is always answered by the immune system by regulating the stimulation so that no autoimmune phenomena occur. And now we have learned how these breaks of the immune system work. And rather than stimulate the immune system with checkpoint inhibitors, we now can take off these breaks to allow a certain degree of autoimmunity that also can attack cancer. But you still help the patient uh, to fight with his immune system, the tumor for himself. Yes, and that works quite well in melanoma nowadays. Mm -hmm. And there we have learned a lot of the mechanisms and now we are applying this for a number of other cancers like lung cancer, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, head and neck cancer. So we are learning the, to use this for a variety of different forms of cancers. Professor Keilholz, what kind of strategies are available against metastases? Metastases are at different parts of the body, so they usually cannot be treated by surgery or radiotherapy. They need medical treatment, and this exactly leads to the modern therapies we have against cancer that control the pro proliferation of cancer cells. Mm -hmm. and, and most of my patients in, in my office uh, who are um, cancer patients are very, very afraid of side effects. We just saw in the report that this patient had nearly no side effects at all. So can, can you say that modern therapies uh, are better for the patients and with fewer side effects? Yes, that's very true. Modern therapies are more specific against cancer, so they have less side effects. Um, they have different side effects, though, which we have to learn how to uh, cope with. Um, but overall, it's much less, so that mo many p patients can be treated in the ambulatory and don't need to come into the hospital as inpatients, but can go home uh, every day and just need to be seen by very well-trained physicians. Which is good for the quality of life and good against infections you could easily catch in, in a hospital. Yeah. 
Um, the World Health Organization says that the number of people getting cancer will rise to almost 22 million every new patient, uh, uh, cancer patient per year in the next 15 years. Is um, cancer in the rise? Yes, it is in the rise. And there's a number of reasons for this. The easiest reason is that we get older mm -hmm. and of course age-associated cancers get more like prostate cancer in men or certain immunologic cancer, chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Those just get more frequent by age. But there's other cancers that are still caused by smoking. We, the population overall has had increasing smoking habits over the last decades and so we see the consequences of mm -hmm. that. And there's also other forms of cancers that are more subtly associated with lifestyle, like with obesity or certain dietary behavior. If we eat more beef, then in those populations we see more colon cancer. If we have more obesity in those populations, we have more breast cancer and ovarian cancer. It's sometimes difficult to find the direct link or the explanation for this. This is just epidemiological investigation that shows the association between behavior and risk of cancers, but most is smoking. Yeah, and, and nutrition, we got a view question from Thailand. Fasekas Freiges from Thailand wants to know, um, he has read that cow's milk could increase the risk of getting prostate cancer. Is there any truth to that? There's no association between cow's milk and prostate cancer, right? Most dietary associations are indirect ones. So if you drink a lot of carrot juice, that means you eat less cattle. Mm. That is fine and that so indirectly means that you have a healthy diet and that always is good against cancer. Okay. And, and some people who survive cancer get a tumor again after years. So it's frequently coming, uh, common in families. Why is that? There are familiar traits for cancer. Um, there are strong traits that many members of the family get cancer. Mm. Their genetic counseling and testing is important. There are less common Uh, traits that are difficult to understand because they are not that direct. So just an increase of certain cancer types in certain families, mm. they are difficult to understand and difficult to prevent. That just means that you should do cancer prevention programs. Okay. Professor Carlos, thanks so much for being with us in the studio today. Thank, Thank you. you.